There are many questions that people have. The first one, is this a second wave? Is it the continuation of the first wave? But is it less deadly than what we saw back in March and April? Okay, I think um, there are different philosophies how to call it, uh, but in uh, any case, it's uh, an upsurge of cases. Whether it's second wave, first wave, third wave, it, it doesn't matter. Um, the, uh, what we are seeing is that uh, due to the expansion of testing, uh, the uh, majority of ca new cases is among uh, adults or people younger than 50 who have uh, less risk of severe disease. So um, the, the reason why the uh, hosp hospitalization rates and uh, intensive care unit uh, rates are uh, still um, uh, not as high as uh, they were in spring is due to the fact that uh, it's now a different population that uh, gets actually tested and uh, uh, is diagnosed positive. However, we see uh, in several countries uh, now that uh, elderly, uh, the rate in, in elderly is raising, that the hospitalization um, admissions are raising, uh, uh, rising, and also that the uh, mortality is increasing. So it is uh, a serious increase in transmission in the countries. Andrew Amon, do we have any sense of how, how much of the population has already had the virus and can't catch it again? And does that dictate how we should be dealing with these restrictions and lockdowns in Europe? I mean, from uh, a lot of questions around the immunity are still uh, not answered. Um, but from what we know from the studies that have been done, the assumption is that overall it's about 15 percent of the European population <laughs> that has been uh, exposed to the virus. Dr. Ammon, Tom Keene in New York, good morning uh, to you. We just assume the Germans get it right. There's something about German engineering, whether it's automobiles or medicine, and you know it's a lot of hard work and organization. What is your single message to continental Europe and to a United States embarrassed on how to get organized to get this contained? Um. A very difficult question because I uh, don't know exactly how um, uh, the colleagues in the U.S. are approaching this. Uh, I only can say that uh, in uh, uh, in the EU that uh, countries have uh, followed after the um, loosening or easing of measures in uh, May, June, have followed the uh, expansion of uh, testing and contact tracing. However, apparently. Currently, um, uh, uh, some of the easing of the measures was a bit too enthusiastic. So we are dealing now with an increase in, in right. cases. Uh, you, well, part of your original research was on the chronic condition of the liver. Tell me about the chronic condition of people who are younger and the belief of many in America that they are discreet and separate from old people with this virus. If there's a lot of young people getting sick, what does that mean for the older people that are still alive? Well, um, I, in, in general, the um, uh, people below 50 have a, a lower risk of having a severe disease, um, getting uh, admitted to hospital or die. That doesn't mean that they cannot get severe disease, go to hospital or die. Uh, so I think uh, we have to be very, very careful here uh, to say that uh, uh, someone who is below 50 and gets sick is automatically um, safe. Um, we have also among uh, younger adults uh, cases who have no underlying disease and who died. 